he's not gonna care, he's not gonna fucking be here. <laughs>
your hands. <laughs> feel about my life. Uh, anyway, listen, I know you're wanting, you're wondering why am I saying, now you know Barack Obama is very sensitive about human rights issues and civil rights issues. So we all, we can put that aside. We all know that to be true. I, I know you're wondering why I have chosen to speak out. Are you yawning, sir? <laughs> you here. I walked I walk five miles to school every single day, twice. Five miles to school, to, to school and five miles back. For years and years, for my entire high school life. I was really, really poor. My mother wouldn't even give, give me the quarter for the bus fare. I was in so much agony, psychic, all kinds of agony. She made all our clothes, and I went to sight, I have to say, but she was a brilliant seamstress, and I loved her with all my heart. And I had so much respect for them because they were really hardworking. My dad was the most hardworking guy I ever saw in my life, and he, he made me into a hard worker. So I'm a really hard worker, and I want to be a good citizen because that's the kind of person I am. I because he is someone defrauded the bank and he's so mortified and he wants to kill himself and the angel comes down and says, this is what would happen if you do. And this, I feel, 2000, when the election was basically stolen. <laughs> Brilliant friend, Vanzella. I love her with all my heart. 
She was an older Italian lady, and she, and one of her favorite expressions was, the fish stinks from the head. The fish stinks from the head. Yes. Which means, yeah. 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 If, you, if, you, if you hire someone who, is, who doesn't have it all there, your, every, all the rest of you is going to go to hell. And that's exactly what happened. Instead of hiring the smartest, most qualified person we could find in 2000, we hired someone we wanted to have a beer with. <laughs> this shit has got to stop. Yeah. I want to say right now, I don't want someone like me in the White House. And I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. Sometimes it feels like, you know, they call people, if you're smart, they call you an elitist, which is some kind of code or put down for being smart or being intelligent and, and having a view of the world or having been well traveled or something or being intellectually curious. It is so unfair. Screw the up. Is, the president is supposed to be smarter than the rest of us. I mean, yeah. don't you want someone running this great right. country who's smarter than yes. the is going to come across his desk and he has to have the ability to absorb it, to synthesize it, and to come up with solutions to these ghastly, ghastly problems, which come, seem to come more and more frequently. I mean, in your whole life, have you ever lived through eight years like this? No. no. I've never seen anything like it. You turn around, you're going along one day, and everything's kind of fine, and then suddenly it's like, oh, credit crunch, oh, a hurricane, oh, global warming, oh, which I think is so incredible. He can talk to you, not just make you understand what you're going through, but find, but show you the path out of the quagmire. And he, is, he, not, he doesn't just show you the path, he also makes you want to get on the path. Yeah. And be the best person you can be. And that's what we need, because our national heart is broken. Our heart is broken, our national heart is broken. Yeah. We need someone to help us put it back together again. And that is, that guy is Barack Obama. Barack Obama! Don't forget us, don't forget Joe Biden. Anyway, I also want to say, you know we're at a crossroads, everyone talks about the great crossroads. The crossroads is a transformation, he's a transformational ca uh, candidate. He is, he is, it's a new generation. You know what? It's time to, It's time for a new generation. It this is. This last generation didn't do so good. <laughs> yes. It's time for a new generation. New blood. Let's bring new blood in. I, well, this is one, of, one more thing I want to say. Here are the crossroads of our, our past and our future. Are we going to continue to snarl at each other? Are we going to continue to call each other names? No. Are we going to continue to, to be on our high horse and let our nation turn into a third world country? No. Is that, that is, if that is not what you want, if you want to avoid that slippery slide into the hell of a third world country, you must get on the phone, email your friends, get out your Rolodex if some of you are a little dyslexic like I am, <laughs> and put some energy behind this election. You've got two weeks, two weeks to do your part. We can do it. Can you do it? We can do it.